I know this channel has plenty of Amiga fans, but I wonder how many of you owned a light gun for your system back in the day? Well, one came into my possession recently, and today we're going to explore it and go down the rabbit hole of Amiga light gun games. Hello cave dwellers, welcome into the cave. Today we're looking at this, it's the Trojan Phaser light gun. Now, in many ways, this is not unusual at all. If you look at it, those of you who remember light guns, particularly from the 1980s, will look at that style and say, I've seen a million other light guns like that before. It's got a style that's very much like, I guess, a 1960s sci-fi phaser. You can imagine seeing that in Star Trek or any other number of sci-fi series. I'm afraid my sci-fi knowledge probably runs out about there, so we won't go down that road before I expose myself as having terrible sci-fi knowledge. But to me, that looks like a 1960s sci-fi gun. Where it is unusual, and this is from my own personal experience, is that it's for a Commodore Amiga. Now, I'd be interested to hear if you have different stories to me, but I don't remember a Commodore Amiga light gun being on sale back in the day. I remember light guns feeling a little bit tired and outdated in that, that lull between the 8-bit era and then when we got on a little bit later with the PlayStation generation and, and the light gun games that came out for that. In that lull of the 16-bit era, I don't remember the Phaser light gun and I don't remember any light guns at all for the Amiga, which is why it was so interesting for me when this turned up to explore the gun and we've got some of the games that came with it. And we'll look a little bit at the bigger picture as well at some of the other guns that were available for the Amiga, but mainly we'll look at this and it does work. So we'll have a little go on it as well. Now, light guns weren't just a gimmick of the 1980s or even the 70s because some of you will remember there were the simple Pong machines that combined the Pong paddles with a light gun and you could do a simple kind of skeet shoot game where the, uh, the square would bounce around the screen and you had to shoot it with a light gun. So in many ways, these are some of the earliest style gaming peripherals alongside paddles that were ever made for gaming. The most familiar to many of you will be the Nez Zappa. I think that's one of the best looking light guns ever made. Duck Hunt was the obvious game to play with the Zapper, and the combination of the simple electronics and fairly cheap to make electronics in these guns and the CRT beam on our old pre-flat screen televisions that made them work meant that the result was accurate enough and the timing was fast enough on these things for you to actually have a good gaming experience. But it didn't matter how good a gun looked because we were stuck in that classic chicken egg light gun situation, which was if you parted with your hard-earned cash for one of these, it was highly likely that there would be no more games for it than those that were bundled in the pack with it. Why would developers make games for a bit of kit that didn't come as standard and try to cater to a subset of a platform's owners when you could appeal to absolutely everyone? We've seen it time and time again with many peripherals over the years. Now developers could try and get around that by adding things like mouse and joystick support, but you always felt a little bit cheated if you were playing a game that was primarily made for a light gun and you didn't have a light gun. Didn't quite feel the same, especially if you were playing it with an Amiga tank mouse. That certainly didn't feel like a gun or a tank for that matter. So it would take the next generation again when we went into the 32-bit era with classic arcades that came along like Virtua Cop, Point Blank, Time Crisis, all of these games that then got arcade perfect ports down to the PlayStation or the Sega Saturn, um, or indeed we got great ports on the PC at that point, it would take those killer apps to really reinvigorate the excitement for light guns that we first saw in the earlier ones when this new technology came along and it looked great, and then again in that later generation. But we have this lull in the middle, this 16-bit lull. Again, I'm going to dip into personal experience now. For me, it was a lull where... I just looked at these things and thought they were a waste of money. So that's why it surprised me when this one came up for the Amiga, because I don't remember seeing such a device for the Amiga. And we've got games to try it out. And I've discovered that there were a few more options available. So my world was not fully informed back then. And we're going to rectify that now. We're going to learn a little bit about this, as well as the wider picture of light gun games on the Commodore Amiga. And we're actually going to try some out and see if they're any good. We'd like to thank PCBWay.com for supporting our episode today. They aren't just about PCBs, although they do do a tremendous job of that. They also offer CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, and injection molding. If you're creating, then PCBWay.com can help you bring your project to life. Get an instant quote now over at PCBWay.com and we thank them for their support.
So let's get to the bottom of this then. Is it any good and what is it? The first question I had when I saw this was, is it even new? Because of course we had all those guns in the 8-bit era and this casing looks incredibly familiar. So I had a look around the cave and I found this. This is the Magnum light phaser. Uh, this was for the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. And you can see that that has absolutely come from the same mold. You've got the same features all the way down here. A uh, different label, I've taken our label off here. Same sights, grip, trigger, absolutely everything is the same. So actually our 16-bit Amiga light gun is recycled, at least from the molds from this 8-bit gun. And I've opened it up, if, um, if I pop the lid off of ours, there we go. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it. It's an identical light gun. So the molds are exactly the same. I would love to show you inside this one, but the difference is, I say the molds are the same. The other half of our Amiga one has screw holes and this one is the same on both sides. There are no screws. And try as I might to kind of prise it open, it just feels rock solid. It feels like this thing has been uh, glued together. So I'm not going to force it because I think something will just break in the process of trying to open this one. But we can look inside our Amiga light gun and you can see it's very simple. Very little going on in there. We've got the uh, trigger here which activates the micro switch here which tells the photo transistor over here to do its thing via the lens. That's it. It's really that simple and that's why they could be sold pretty cheaply. Uh, I think this one was £29 when it came to market. So that's what our gun looks like inside. And there were two games that were bundled with it. They were Skeet Shoot and Orbital Destroyer, uh, both from 1991, the year that the gun was released. And then there were some extra commercial games that you could buy off the shelf, such as this one, which you got a look at earlier. We've got the screws from the gun there. Let's take those out of the way. And uh, we just have to talk about the lizard on this front cover, really, don't we? In what planet do lizards have to wear knee-high boots? <laughs> you can just see them peeking over there. But we shouldn't judge a game by its cover art, should we? So I'm going to put the screws back into the gun. Let's put it back together. And we're going to start off our testing our Amiga light gun experience by testing out Skeet Shoot, Orbital Destroyer and Aliex. Let's give them a try first. For ease of capturing, I'll be using an emulator to capture some of these and show you what they're like. But I also played many of them on the Amiga with the light gun. WinUAE, the emulator that I use, has native support in the controllers tab to emulate a Trojan phaser light gun specifically. You can choose that one and it will emulate it using your mouse. So you can give them a go too if you want to. Skeet Shoot, when it loads, proudly tells us it was written using the basic programming language Amos which isn't usually a mark of quality, but it's a simple game and it does what it does very well. Shoot the skeets, get bonus points for shooting the gull and the egg it drops, because that's how you make a bird lay an egg. Shoot even more eggs in the bonus round between stages, trying to avoid the bad eggs, that's the blue ones, and shoot the white ones to get extra points, and you travel around the world doing the same. I'm okay with this game, and I realized straight away something that I already knew, but I use these light guns so infrequently it's often easy to forget. They work great, you don't ever feel cheated by them. You might feel cheated by the game of course, but the light gun itself is responsive, its aim is true, and it works just as well on an Amiga as I know light guns do on any other system pretty much with a CRT. The other packing title is Orbital Destroyer, which is more like a traditional shoot 'em up in that you have waves of enemies appearing in patterns swirling around the screen and you have to shoot them. What caught my eye on this game is that in the credits it says it's made by Software Creations and that the programmer is Mike Delves. Now Software Creations was a pretty big deal. We learned a lot about them when I interviewed founder of Richard Kay and I'll put a link in the description if you want to watch that interview. It's really interesting. And they put a bunch of great games out including a port of Bubble Bobble, they made a great NES game called Solstice, and they went on to become part of the Nintendo Dream Team in the N64 era. This was a big, important developer. When this game came out, they were making far superior games, so I can only imagine that Trojan made it worth their while. And digging a little deeper, I found that Software Creations also made five titles for the Magnum Light Phaser, that's the gun that we saw earlier, but for the Commodore 64 version. 
They made games for that in 1987, so they had past experience of serving light gun games. When you're finished with the packing games, it's time to face the sexy lizards. This is Aliex, and this too was made by Mike Dells and Software Creations, who are credited in the title. Like all of the games we've played so far, it's very straightforward. And that's the thing with the light gun games. I'd love for something a little bit more complex where the gun element complements the more traditional gameplay. Maybe the gun element would be used sparingly just to make it more exciting, but not so in this one. Shoot everything until you run out of energy or run out of ammo. If your ammo runs dry, that's it. The game just ends, which is really frustrating. So you need to ignore a lot of the targets to keep the game going. Exploring the catalogue further of games made by Trojan specifically, standout titles include The Enforcer. Now this was quite nice in its presentation. It's a standard game of shoot the criminals, but not the innocent people, and they appear in windows and doorways. This one's a little bit difficult because the same sprite might be putting their hands up or putting their hand in their pocket to pull out a gun. So you can't just identify them by how they look or the color of clothes they're wearing. Although the little old lady pulls a gun from her purse seemingly every time, so you can never trust the little old ladies. Firestar, this one was a little bit odd. You're on patrol in space and you have to identify and shoot the bad ships hidden amongst the traffic. It's like you're some kind of space traffic warden. This is another one where you think you're doing really well, but then everything comes to an abrupt halt just because you've run out of ammo. So those are some of the games that were packed in with the gun by Trojan or made by Trojan and sold at retail. I can find two more examples of games that were made by third parties that specifically supported the Trojan light gun. The first is Die Hard 2 by Grand Slam. This is based on the movie, of course, and I think at first glance you'd be hard pressed to tell this was on a 16-bit system. It looks very Commodore 64-like to me with that color palette. It's a game that goes from pretty easy to monstrously hard in a split second, but in its favor, it does at least feel like it's a longer game with more variety than those that we've seen so far. The levels follow the theme of the film, so we're starting off in the airport here, trying to shoot the bad guys and avoid the innocent children carrying balloons. And looking into reviews, there was indeed a C64 version, so that comes as no surprise, as well as an Amiga version which scored as low as 36% and as high as 75% across magazines. I'd put that around about 50%, I think that would be a fair score. The standout title by far for the lineup of games that supports natively the Trojan phaser is Space Gun, published by Ocean. This was Taito's arcade game, a conversion of a pretty well-rounded game that's been tried and tested in the seafront arcades of the UK and around the world before translating onto our small screens. It plays pretty well. You can strategically shoot the limbs off of the aliens in the order that you want, and you can hit spacebar to walk back in the other direction. So it's a game that's on rails, but you can flip the switch and walk back so that you can find the secret items, ammo, health, whatever else that you're looking for. And as you can see on my boxed copy here, it says loud and clear on the front, mouse, joystick, and Trojan light phaser supported. So those are the games that I've found so far that natively support the Trojan. There are a couple more notable mentions, but I didn't cover them because they came out in 2006. And that's a version of Operation Wolf and Operation Thunderbolt, which were modified retrospectively to um, enable support for the Trojan phaser. So it didn't work back in the day with it, but some clever hackers by the name of Sifu on the EAB forums released that back in 2006. It's not a surprising experience. I think it's what we expected of the Trojan, but the video doesn't end here because it's worth mentioning other light guns did exist for the Amiga. Let's take a look at some of the competition. The Action Wear Phaser. This one looks very much like the Atari XG1, so I'm guessing once again it's the same gun, manufacturer, or at the very least, moulds, to bring the cost of production down. Now I tried out some of the Action Wear games, as there are a few of them about, and it's a similar story to the Trojan. Take Em Out by Artronic Limited is our first. This one starts off in a shooting range, and you have to make the grade to hit the mean streets of somewhere. Basingstoke, perhaps? And I quite like the animations in this one, but it did all get a little bit too odd when a ninja appeared on the roof, and um, he was quickly followed by Rambo hiding in the bins. On clearing the first level, I expected to find myself in another street or another town, but instead it took me skeet shooting. And this isn't a bonus round, 
If you don't shoot enough of the skeets, that's it, game over. You survived Rambo, but you've humiliated yourself at skeet shooting. Go home, soldier. POW by Actionware followed the same format as Take Em Out. You start off in a shooting range to test your metal, and then you head off out onto a jolly Operation Wolf ripoff. And it is a total ripoff. It's nowhere near as good as Operation Wolf, but it does have this death scream sound effect. And that will be very familiar to anyone that's played the adventure game Elvira on the Amiga. Here it is again. Is this the Wilhelm scream of the Amiga world? I wonder where it originates from. Capone is set in the early 20th century gangland of Al Capone. This shooter takes you through streets filled with trench coats, fedora hats, tommy guns, and skateboarders. And we all remember it wasn't the crime syndicates that got Al Capone locked up in the end, it was the skateboarding violations. Creature, not to be confused with creatures, is set in space. You have to guide your little guy into a space station and you have to protect him by shooting the aliens, tentacles and slime coming towards him. It's kind of like Space Gun if Space Gun was written 10 years earlier. Just try not to get killed by the broccoli facehugger in this one. Sideshow is also from Actionware and it's on three discs. And this might be the most thought out game that I've played from the Actionware light gun range. You access fairground booths, you win tickets, which allows you to unlock other fairground booths and each one is a fun little mini game. And some actual thought really seems to have gone into this game. I enjoyed it. Moving on from the Actionware light gun, another example of a gun for the Amiga was the Gollum light gun. Now very little information exists about this one, but it looks kind of like a sci-fi Uzi. And only two games ever existed for it. Worldwide Hunting, one that was simply called Sport. And then there was the Larissio West Phaser, which was released for the Amstrad CPC, Atari ST, Amiga and PC. And what was different about this one was that it was in the style of a Wild West revolver. I really like the look of this one, but it is quite difficult to find images for it. I don't think it was ever sold in the UK. Games for this included Steve McQueen, West Phaser, an officially licensed Steve McQueen game. This was previously released on the Amstrad, I think just as West Phaser, and then rebranded as Steve McQueen. Amiga Format rated this game 26%. And other games from the same software house, such as Crazy Shot, didn't fare much better. Well, thank you for making it through that selection of games with me. How does this compare to your experiences? Did you own a different light gun, which I haven't mentioned today? Did you own the phaser? And if so, how did you get on with it? Did it just gather dust on the shelf like I suspect it would have done for many owners? Regardless, I have enjoyed exploring the games today, not necessarily because they've been fun. Some of them were, Space Gun in particular, but because I've just found it interesting exploring the genre. And you should too. If you want to jump on WinUAE, as I mentioned earlier, just go into the Controls tab, select your mouse, and then in the next tab, drop down, and you can either choose Generic Light Gun or specifically the Trojan Phaser. And between those two, you can play just about every light gun compatible game. Granted, it's with a mouse, which isn't quite the same, but at least you can give them a try and um, see what you may or may not have been missing. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.